Every great programmer starts their journey into a new programming language by writing a program that does nothing more than print the words hello world to a screen. And you are no exception. Uh, the idea is going to be that in going through this exercise, we are going to be able to familiarize ourselves with the workflow of creating a simple Python project using Robot Mesh Studio. Hello World accomplishes this uh, by introducing us to the program editor where we'll be writing our code, the run button which will interpret our code, and lastly the program status area uh, which will display any output or errors that are generated as a result of running our program. Let's take a look at how to do this. So we're here inside Robot Mesh Studio. Now if you've never been here before, there's a couple of things you may want to consider doing beforehand. Uh, chiefly that is to install the RMC plugin. Uh, Robot Mesh Studio uses a Chrome web browser extension to communicate with the VEX hardware and in later lessons we're going to be using that plugin quite a bit. So do install that. While you are here, um, you may also want to give some thought to creating a free Robot Mesh Studio account. Now you don't have to create an account to use the software, uh, but if you want to save your work you will need to have an account to do that. So now would be a good time to consider signing up. Uh, with those two things out of the way, let's begin with creating our very first Python project. I'm going to come over here and create a new project. And for my target, you're going to see that I have two very different choices. I can create a uh, project for the physical VEX hardware, be it the VEX IQ, VEX V5, or VEX EDR. Um, I can also create something called a mimic, and this is unique to Robot Mesh Studio. What a mimic is, is it is a simulation of the VEX hardware, uh, meaning that I actually don't need to have a real VEX robot connected to my computer in order to test my code. Now because I'm lazy and I don't feel like chasing a robot around the room and downloading and re-downloading my code, I am going to pick a mimic for these first couple of lessons, but later on we will eventually move to programming the physical hardware. So I'm going to click V5 Mimic. For programming language you can see I have a couple of different choices. I'm going to choose Python. And for my options, my default project name that gets generated is Cheerful Basket. And that this software wizard always comes up with a cute name. Uh, you never know who you're going to be. Sometimes you're Joyful Horse, other times you're Crazy Train. Uh, I am going to give this a more meaningful name so that I know what this project actually does. I'm going to write Hello World. And that's because we're going to be writing Hello World to the screen. So let's hit Create. I'm going to take a moment to discuss the Robot Mesh Studio interface. You can see there's a couple of tabs. Uh, on my far left here I have a description panel. And we can think of the description panel as being like our engineering notebook. I can annotate, um, I can add hyperlinks, comments, YouTube videos. Um, this is an especially awesome resource if you happen to be working on a VEX Robotics team because it's going to allow all the members of your team to document their design. So this is really just a nice addendum to the project. Um, our code window, of course, where we're going to write our program. This Mimic tab is unique uh, to uh, Robot Mesh Studio Mimic projects. This is where we would build our CAD uh, 3D model that we could control in the simulated environment. So here you can see I have a bunch of 3D VEX elements. Um, earlier, when I was choosing my project, I specified it as a VEX V5 project. So the elements here are going to be EDR parts. Had I chosen an IQ project, these would all be plastic uh, components. So here's a C channel. I can click on it, add it, and then I can use these uh, tools up here to manipulate the geometry. And with enough patience and practice, you can actually build a virtual VEX robot. Here on the far right hand corner is the device monitor. Uh, the device monitor is going to show uh, all of our motors, uh, smart sensors and peripheral devices and what ports they're plugged into, uh, both when programming the virtual robot and the physical device. At the bottom of the screen is our program status area. Uh, the program status area, as we begin writing more, co more complicated Python programs, is where any errors are going to appear and be reported. Uh, we will also, as we start working with sensors, any kind of data logging or values that come back from those sensors are likely to get reported down here. And finally, here at the top of the screen, we have our uh, download and run buttons. Uh, here I can hit the play button to run my code on the robot or on the mimic. 
Uh, I can click this pull down menu. I can also uh, transfer my uh, finished program to the uh, robot hardware without necessarily executing it. And this might be ideal if I wanted to untether the USB cable to the robot and let my robot run on the floor. Any and all of these windows can be uh, configured to create an ideal workspace for you. So you can see that if I take my mouse, I can stretch this window, shrink it. There's a little hotspot button that I can click on that will minimize the window, maximize the window. And you can see that this hotspot shows up in a lot of different places. So here I can also close this pane, open this window pane. At the top of uh, each of these windows is a little arrow key, and this is like an anchor. It will allow me to dock windows. So if I want to work in a multi-windowed environment and create a really ugly interface, I can definitely do that. Um, I'm going to undock these windows and restore my original uh, project environment. And let's come back to code. So uh, let's begin with writing our very first Python program. I am going to write the word print, P-R-I-N-T. You can see that when I do that, that the word shows up in pink, meaning that it is a special keyword to the Python interpreter. And here I'm going to uh, write a opening double quote and write, hello, world. And when I am finished, I come up here to press the run button to execute my code. And success. The green bar here at the top tells me that my program has finished running. And here we see that it prints, hello world. So let's come back up here and add a couple of additional lines. I can also write print. Um, this is my second line of Python ever. And this time I used single quotes. So the Python interpreter doesn't care whether you use double quotes to encapsulate the string of text or single quotes, uh, as long as you happen to close with the same style of quote. So again, if I hit the run button up here, it's going to write, hello world, this is my second line of Python ever. Now what happens if I delete this single quote and change it to a double quote? So now you can see I open with a single quote, I close with a double quote. What do you think about that, Mr. Python interpreter? I will hit run, and it goes, bleh, doesn't like that. It says that uh, I need to change this back. So do remember to be consistent in your application of quotes. Now, uh, Robot Mesh Studio is using Python 2, if you're curious, and that's largely because of memory limitations on the VEX IQ brain and the older VEX EDR cortex. As VEX releases new and improved hardware, which I'm sure they will do, uh, for the uh, VEX IQ, we'll probably likely upgrade the Python interpreter to Python 3. Right now, the distinction between Python 3 and Python 2 is quite minimal. Uh, Python 3 uh, largely just formalizes uh, many of the practices of Python 2. So if you have been working in Python 3, you might notice that print statements are a little bit different. They go print and they use opening and closing parentheses. So it would use uh, an opening parenthesis like this and singular double quotes and say, this is Python 3. And then I have to use the same style of double quote and close with, close with the right parenthesis. And of course I could do this um, using single quotes too. Using uh, parentheses. I hope that's how I spell it. Okay, and let's run this code and see what happens. I'm gonna come up here and hit run. It says, hello world, this is my second line of Python ever. This is Python 3 using parentheses. Um, so what style should you use? I would recommend that if you're brand spanking new to Python programming, get in the habit of using these opening and closing uh, parentheses. Um, if you do it this way, the Python 2 interpreter will run the code as valid Python. If you go up here and do not use the parentheses and you go into a Python 3 environment, you'll likely trigger an error uh, by the Python interpreter once it comes to parse your code. So uh, develop good habits early on. Uh, eventually, this software too will upgrade to Python 3 and you will find that um, you will be writing valid Python. Congratulations on running your first Python program. I'm sure you feel much smarter already. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving us a like. 
Uh, also consider hitting that subscribe button for more updates on Robot Mesh Studio and using it with VEX robots.